Good morning and welcome to Christ Tabernacle Apostolic Church Christian Education Adult Sunday School. My name is Evangelist Tracy Williams. Let's get into our lesson. The title of the lesson is Confident in God's Love. So if you um, grab your Bible and turn to 1 John, we're looking at chapter 3, uh, verses 18 to 24. While you're getting your Bible, just a couple of things. The focus thought is for this particular lesson, um, even when our hearts con uh, condemn us, we can stand in confident we can stand confident in God's love for us. This is the end of our um, series for Walking in the Light. This is our last lesson. And again, the title of the lesson is Confident in God's Love. So let's begin. The Bible says, 1 John 3, 18 through 24, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. 20 says, for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. And the final verse, which is the focus verse for the lesson, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God? 24 says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Verse 18, we are to love Indeed, we are the truth. Verse 23 says, it is a commandment. We have to believe on Jesus Christ and love one another. And then when we look at verse 24, if we keep the commandment of loving one another, we dwell in him and he dwells in us and abides in us by the spirit which he gave us. So when you break down and look at the lesson Text, the things that we can meditate on, we're looking at verse 18, 23, and 24. We are to love indeed. We are the truth. The fact that the verses that he's given us is a commandment, right? Believe on Jesus Christ and to love one another. So let's get into the lesson. So the first part we're looking at, we belong to the truth. It's a privilege to belong to the truth. Um, often we look at um, the encounters and the situations uh, that we have that show and that we see day to day the opportunities to demonstrate love. Sometimes the love that we uh, demonstrate can be easy, um, but when you look at the first number A, it says love not in word only and the fact that talk is cheap. We often feel that we could love or do love day to day, right? Um, we love our husband, we love our wives, we love our children. That's almost a day to day love, something that we do, right? We might love going to work. We might be cheered or um, have a love for the people that we work with. It's a, a day to day love. But when we look, we are privileged among the creation, right? To belong to the truth and to understand who God is and his identity and to identify him by name. We've taken on his name in baptism. His spirit abides with us. It's a privilege, but with the privilege is great responsibility, hence the commandment to love, right? We must ensure that our righteousness, the lesson says, exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. 
because we're going to be held accountable. We can't have that mentality and say that we love. If we are of truth and we are privileged, our status in that demands a level of sacrifice that equals our exalted privileges. You have to think about that. We're set or asked to love. This context in John 3, 17 is talking about love that exudes, exudes sacrifice for those who are less fortunate. We are to sacrifice and we are to exude and show to everyone the love of God, right? It's easy to sign a check. It's easy to talk about it. It's easy to look at the things that are easy ways to love, but the Lord wants us to put our love in action. So love not only in word, talk is cheap. Love, it requires energy. Love, it requires dedication. Love, it requires discipline on your promise, on discipline in your mind, discipline in your, what you say, discipline in who you're representing. Remember, we have a privilege that doesn't come to every creation, right? This privilege that is with us um, has to do with truth, and this privilege that is with us has to do with a deep responsibility, right? Giving or what have you is easy to do, but love, right? Not only in word, but doing in deed. So when it says love in deed and in truth, we as children of God, we have, like I said, the responsibility to love. It's not necessarily pretty like you see on TV. You have to see beyond traditional ways and out of your comfort zone in order to love. We can look at loving our children, loving our pet, um, loving different people that we know in our lives, but we have to look at the fact that man is hungry and they're hungry to find someone, something that can demonstrate love. So our faith can counter any way that we're feeling that we're, we're scared to show any particular love or nervous about doing it indeed. We can counter all of that by calling on God and asking God and helping, um, <clears throat> helping others through God to understand that love is real and love is of God and that we love as Christians, as believers. When we look at our love in action, shows that we are God's children. We look at love, John 13, 35, and then Acts 2, 38. Those two things identify who we are and whom, whom's we are, right? When you look at love, it's no less a part of our apostolic identity than Acts 2, 38, than being saved, than having the Holy Ghost, than being baptized. We have to show love. We have to have a balance of showing love in order to claim whose we are. It's just as important. So let's look at the first question. Think of a time when you were the recipient of a church member's love, someone whose actions went beyond mere words. What did that person do? What did it mean to you? You know, we also have to take into consideration when we look at this particular question that everybody has their own thoughts um, about like what's precious to them. Um, some people or people don't necessarily need money for a show of love or to be a recipient of love. People don't need um, food maybe, just the smallest gesture can show love. Just a smile can show love. Just a positive word can show love. When you look at this question about a time that a church member did something for you, what did the person do and what did it mean to you? All of us could have various, various different um, experiences that they've had. 
or that was given to them by a recipient to just show love or a loving gesture. And it could be anything. It could be opening a door. It could be um, walking someone to their car. It could be calling up someone and saying, I'm praying for you or texting somebody. There's so many ways to show love and to really appreciate it. Next question. It says, how can we love in a manner that defines the truth of Jesus Christ beyond doctoral statements and in the reality of daily living? Now, this is interesting because in our daily living, we're rushed. In our daily living, we're, we're hither, thither, and yon. We're all over the place. But in our daily living, what are we going to do in order to show love, right? That defines the truth of Jesus Christ. Beyond the doctrine, but looking at um, who he is and introducing him through love of who he is. What are we going to do in our daily lives? And then the third question they have is, how can a husband make his wife feel safe emotionally, physically, and spiritually? Why is an atmosphere of safety important for selfless love to be received and reciprocated? So now we're looking at husbands and wives. We're looking at um, couples. We're looking at the fact that um, husband and wives, the Bible says that the husband is supposed to love his wife as, as Christ loves the church. Um, it starts with the family. A husband showing love like this, it continues with the wife. And from the wife, it trickles down with the kids and so forth and so on. It makes um, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, it makes the whole atmosphere of the house safe. The children perceive the atmosphere of love and safety and respect, and they see it from their parents. And it starts with the husband. I know some people might have a, a issue with that, but yes, it does. It starts with the husband, and then it trickles it, its way down. And for those that um, are raising children by themselves, it starts with God because he's there with you. Um, if the husband is not there, God is there with you. And there's still your trickle down effect. All right, let's look at section two. It talks about we have confidence before God, love in action. It allows our hearts to lift up Jesus and our spirit rejoices when we have love in action. The fact that God is greater than the hearts. He transcends all limits of our mind. God's heart reminds us that he is making the executive decision. Not us. It's never us. Right? We have to look at um, our deeds and our actions and our thoughts. Right? Our intents. Consistently lift up the name of Jesus and demonstrates his selfless love. Our spirits are, um, will naturally rejoice in the confirmation of our hearts that we're being Christ-like, right? So it's better to give than to, to, it's better to give than to receive. When you think about that, yes, it's better for us to give. Because when we give, what do we just talk about? Our hearts rejoice and it demonstrates selfless love. It demonstrates Jesus Christ. The um, Bible says that we are to forgive our debtors as we, f we are to forgive us our debts as we are to forgive our debtors. We are to love our neighbors as ourself. Prefer your brother, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. We strive for a consistent lifestyle of giving, forgiving, loving, and selflessness, and having a humble disposition. So when we look greater is, God is greater than our hearts. One of the greatest benefits of being baptized in the Holy Spirit of God is that we can absorb or um, what do they call it? Osmosis into his greatness. 
transcending limits of our, even our carnal mind and our heart, experiencing the greatness of his heart. If we can only think about that for a minute, right? We can transcend, we can go beyond our carnal heart and experience his heart when we show love, when we demonstrate his selfless love, we become more a part of him. Isn't that something to rejoice about and to look at? When we demonstrate, we become more a part of him, right? God is greater than our heart and knows all things. When you look at 1 John 3 and 20, then it says, even when our hearts condemn us, we can stand confident in God's love. The fact that our flesh is predisposed, right? Um, us to look out for number one. We're hardwired for survival. So we have to turn this upside down. The Holy Ghost makes provisions for our inability, right? For the things that we lack, the Holy Ghost is right there in order to help us and keep us strong. And again, help us to have a heart like the Lord. Help us to be tender hearted and kind. And again, show love just like the Lord did. So let's look at the next question. What is the difference between a person who consistently and willfully breaks God's commandments and one who is consist consciously pursuing a godly lifestyle, but makes some mistakes along the way? What's the difference between the two? There's breaking, um, willfully breaking God's commandments willfully and then there's breaking God's commandments unknowingly or not specifically um, you're doing it as a mistake not doing it as as a plan you're doing it um, not necessarily because you don't know any better but you you've turned to yourself your natural man in order to to do something or figure something out instead of continually to turn to God. It's a mistake and what happens along the way. We have to ask God and tell him that we're sorry and then turn, right? Repent, not follow and do the same thing again. But it's definitely something to think about. So when we look at section number three, we ask and receive. Commit all plans and guess what? You'll have a straight path and more. We are to commit our plans to the Lord and he will make the path straight for us. When we ask in faith and not amiss, he is faithful to give us the desires of our hearts. When we do not receive what we ask for, it is often because we ask amiss. God loves us too much to accommodate a request that is not good for us, right? When because we keep his commandments and we follow what he tells us to do, his plan for our lives, his plan for our lives at home, his plan for our lives at work, his plan for our lives at being, his plan for our life for his work, right? We have to operate in a realm of making his business our business. And he makes our business his business. God is a God of order. We have to make his business our business. So let's look. Um, because we keep his commandments, believing on the name of Jesus and loving one another are the primary considerations, right? These are the things that we have to consider. These are the things that we have to follow as a commandment. This type of belief is a faith commitment it can't be separated from works of faith, right? The Bible is telling us, right, that we have to obey the gospel. We have to obey the gospel through repentance. We have to obey the gospel from, through being baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Spirit, right? And we have to obey the commandments to love one another. 
It can't get any plainer than what it is. Um, because we do what is pleasing in his sight. To fulfill his intent when we love. We're doing what's pleasing in the Lord's sight. Um, allowing his grace and mercy to flow through us, right? Quenching the condemnation and those negative emotions that will hinder us and letting love shine through, letting Christ and the commandments and the Holy Spirit to fuel us to have uh, selfless love and have it spill onto others, just like we would uh, spill a cup of tea or overflow a drink or um, look at a river or a waterfall that's overflowing. Our selfless love should spill into others. God abides with those who love others. You get God's attention. Isn't that something? For us following his commandments, think about it. We get his attention. We will be positioned directly, right? In verse number 23, to obey his commandments, to love one another. 24 goes on to say that we know he abides in us by the spirit that he gave us. So if we love one another and truly with our hearts, not just in word, not just in deed, not just because the Bible says so, but because it's part of who God is and it's his attributes and it's a commandment, the fact that God abides in those who love others. And that's it, period. You get God's attention, right? It's we not being selfish, not maintaining a judgment level of authority that you think you have, but the spirit living inside of us that we have a desire to love one another. So the last question is, does obedient faith mean we are saved by works? Why or why not? So I hope that you... Um, enjoyed this lesson today confident in god's love we have to remember as a church part of our ministry is to love one another um, join us next week and our topic will be alpha and omega please read revelations the uh, first chapter chapter one and remember we are live at 9 45 every sunday morning so go to the website, ctacma.org. Um, you, you can catch us there. You can look under um, Christian Education or the announcements in order to join our Zoom. But we are live at 945 every Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you next time.